Okay, hello and welcome back to Date War. We're going to actually continue this story on the third episode. I'm not sure uh, how far in we are in terms of episode wise. So we're here. So now I suddenly notice the music is a lot more quiet. That is just. I don't understand why my menu always has to be louder. Oh, so something is going wrong here. Um. Right, okay, sure. What? Oh, sure, why? I got something planned for later. There we go. It took me some time, but at last dinner is ready. The final's kitchen didn't include ready-made curry powder or garam masala, but there are plenty of other spices that could be mixed together. I think that's uh, I think that's more interesting anyway. Cooking is a bit like chemistry. Expect you're not not supposed to make things explode, but in chemistry you are. I've never done chemistry, but you're never supposed to make anything explode, right? I mean, unless you are me, I like exploding things, but sure. Could you needs be on me, though? Uh, even if the right ingredients are in there, so that limits the distance I can pound, uh, present well. So my father, uh, what's it? A dinner party should have many different dishes available, so they guess and try a little everything until they find something they like. If you serve only one dish and something doesn't like, someone doesn't like it, it's a problem. Of course, if my father were holding a dinner party, he'd just have it catered, and it's easy to have a wide selection. But uh, uh, they'd be too busy with other things than the food. Uh, both parents can cook, uh, but if they had guests to impress, they'd be too busy with other things than the food. Anyway, what I've ended up uh, with is spiced potatoes, a uh, vegetable barney, and sweet fried bread. Nothing to outre. Is it done yet? I'm starved. Yes, come on in. The boys begin to filter and take in their seats. Lin stilled his head curiously, drawing in a long, slow breath of air through his nose and holding it in for a few moments before exhaling. Right? Mm -hmm. He doesn't say anything more. Thank you much for preparing all this for us. <laughs> Wait until you eat it before you say that. I know I'm not a bad cook, but I don't know what they like either. Anyway, help yourself, this should be enough. I did someone to play without waiting for anyone else, I'm hungry. The others follow suit, a little more costly in some cases. Is there any meat in this? Thank you for the lurk, Klaus. No, it won't urge to eat some vegetables. Unless someone has allergies that they didn't tell me about. Vegetables are a side dish. I'm not forcing you to convert. I'm sure it'll be fine. The meal pro uh, progresses quietly for a bit as everyone uh, samples the food. Because when I said earlier, I'm not sure if Owen is enjoying the meal, he doesn't seem to be eating very much. But then, I haven't been closely watching how he eats before, maybe I'm just paranoid. Linz is eating very much either, and chews, uh, each bite, and chews each bite with slow deliberation. He's really distracted. This is great! Don't talk your mouth fool. He just grins at me. So, um, how is the procedure going? What? The thing, with the forest fuel, to overload it. Yes, that. He sets his rock on his plate. Everything is proceeding according to schedule. The store charge continues to increase. It's hard to imagine uh, needing so much power that it would take days to build up the charge. Short sure, is burn out very quickly. They also have a distinct tendency to explode. Which might be the entertain which might be entertaining to watch from outside the house. Even for you, it will be an expensive disaster. Certainly, I myself am irreplaceable. I didn't tell you find a way to copy yourself. Can you do that in this universe? Not yet. Oh damn it. And thank goodness for that. I know it's too soon for you to know, but if you end up remaining here, do you have any ideas what you want to do with your future? Well, I think about becoming a doctor, but I don't know. I have an awful lot to learn about how things work here. You are not so able to discover future advances that you already know about. Isn't that cheating? Would you rather keep your information secret and let lives be, lives be lost needlessly? No, of course not. I can see it uh, now. Dr. Busker charged to the rescue heroically performing unknown procedures on dying patients over the protest over shocked co workers, but there's no time to explain when lives are at stake. My parents would be so proud, except they would never know. 
in our hearts the world the wood Jesus I just can't it's kind of weird to say that in our hearts they probably believe I was murdered <laughs> they surely wouldn't believe I'd run away not after uh, last year I've been making the best of things I haven't given up and if I had just uh, if I had just run off I'm not sure they'd be happy to see me back hey Jeanette is there any dessert I didn't make any but there's still plenty of ice cream in the freezer that'll do well, at least one person uh, thinks within it was a success. We only have one day, 22 hours and 37 minutes to go. Things are actually moving forward. <laughs> Not gonna lie. We probably need like one more episode after this to be done with like one playthrough. After dinner, I finally come to a uh, place to call up with a book. We get to a different world. Every book here is something I've never had before. Combined with the size of this library, I can be busy here for ages. But in the long run, I know I'll start to miss my old favorites. Uh, the authors I can rely on and books I can read over again. Hey Jeanette. Hi. Uh, thanks for making dinner. It was really nice of you. Uh, you're welcome. So yeah, I thought I should do something nice for you in exchange, but it's hard to think of what I can do uh, while we're stuck in here. Uh, that's okay, you don't have to. So you want the back rub? Huh? I'm pretty good at them. It's all I could come up with. Well, okay. Well, he gets into place behind me, rests his hands on my shoulders. He has such big, strong hands. His swim starts to work their way into my back and... Oh. He's right, he is good at this. I'm not like you, am I? No, this feels great. I'm going to deep... Going to... Oh, God, my... I can't do this. <laughs> I'm going to get deeper. Let me know if I'm doing it too hard. Hmm. I think I need this. I'm not very good at relaxing on my own. Where did you learn to do this? Youth group, mostly. Do you normally do this to Oh, your date? What? No. I mean, well, you know. I know what. Do you know what I was doing of all those girls? All the nights out were as boring as mine. Was it that bad? Not bad, just not good either. We can never uh, went further with anybody. Well, a couple of ladies got pushy, but nothing more than a kiss. He lets go of my shoulders. I couldn't get involved with anybody. If I had a real girlfriend, I'd have to give up on searching. If you had a real girlfriend, you could have told her the truth, and she could have gone with you uh, on your search every week. What girl would believe my story? Besides, I don't know if this majestic, if this magic. Besides, I don't know if this magic would have worked with just any girl. Maybe I just needed you. There's nothing special about me. Sure there is. And um... There's something you should know. What is it? The car didn't really break down. I know. You know? I could put two and two together. You were looking for that mysterious house every trip. You knew it was, was supposed to be and you knew that normally there was nothing there. Find the house was your whole purpose. You weren't going to let anything get in your way. As soon as I saw the lights in the woods in the right place, she killed the car and made it so we need to investigate. So, you're not mad? I understand why you did it, but I don't think it was right. You spent so much effort searching, but I don't think you made enough plans to what to do when you found something. What if they'd be murderers? What have happened to me? And now that we've disappeared, just like Susan did, will anyone know where to look for us? Did you leave any clues? No. I guess I'm just dumb. Yeah, dumb. You wanted to found your way here at all if you were. I spent so long on my game plan to follow Susan, but now I'm all past the goals I planned for. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm out of ideas. I'm not smart enough. You need help with the planning. That's what partners are for. Okay, partner, what should we do now? The music changed. That's a good question. I'd really like to know what Lynch is up to in the basement, but we promised Nathaniel we won't interrupt him. For the question he asked us earlier, Lynch has some knowledge of many different fields of science. He could be doing anything down there. I hope I get to find out when he's done. Well, Lynch said he'd help us uh, when he's finished here, but I think he's more interested in finding a wormhole than finding Susan. So we should come up with ideas for that. It won't be easy since she could be anywhere by now, and we don't know the best ways to search in this world. We should probably talk to the private detective, to a private detective, although it would be expensive to hire one. 
Also, there are little things we can do ourselves, like checking phone books or reading with newspapers for stories about them finding a mystery girl, or making posters dang up around town. Do you have any pictures of her? An old one in my wallet. We can have that photo copied and the poster can mention your name, and maybe some details from our world that she would recognize. It's a long shot, but it's a start. Thanks, I'm glad you're here. We only have one day, 16 hours, 35 minutes left. Darkness, like velvet, surrounds me, warm and soft, black and the blackest night. But somewhere in that void, uh, there's a guiding star. It's the only thing that I can see, my only point of reference, and so, of course, I walk towards it. The light is the way out, home, my family, my future, it's all waiting for me in the light. But wait, isn't that what they say about heaven? I don't want to go to heaven, not yet, I don't want to die. I turn to walk away from the light, but the darkness behind me has become solid. I punch and kick at the solid wall of black behind me, I only see it to push myself towards the light. I don't want to walk into the light. If I can't go back, at least I can stand still until I work out what's going on there. And then, the ground on my feet begins to slope. What was that? I don't know what it was. I don't know what I was dreaming, but I heard a noise, somehow, that woke me up. I can't quite remember what that noise was. There's no one here but me. I wait for a moment, but I don't hear anyone at the door either. Something feels wrong. It's too quiet. Couldn't... Uh, quiet couldn't wake me up. It's like there was... An explosion? I need to find someone who can help. My brother says there's most of this place just down the hall. Psst, Bradley, wake up. I tap on the door, trying not to wake the rest of the house. Mm. A boy looking figure opens the door. Jeanette, what's... Um, I was going to say something, but the thought is briefly knocked on the mat beside the brother's tan, muscular, and entirely naked body. What is it? He notes me staring and looks down. He's out back into his room and closes the door. Let me get dressed first. There is some rustling and thumbs as he moves about. The lights won't turn on. I heard an explosion or something. It woke me up. That's why I came looking for you. Give me a minute. I got my shirt. Oh, if the power is out, that means that would have happened and the forest would be down. He comes out of the room again, pulling his jacket on. Let's go take a look. We tiptoed down the stairs. He could see, but still trying to keep quiet. Beyond the front door, a shimmering, interesting field of light remains. I don't understand. How can it still be there if there's no power? Maybe it's weekend, or maybe they weren't telling us the truth. Before I can stop him, he reaches out to touch the force field. His hand goes right through it. What? It's working. We can leave. Come on, Janet, let's go see this new world of ours. He takes my hand and. I s it's suddenly flung backwards. What? I took off his hand and poked the force field. It's just as solid as ever. Too late. Uh, it came back. That can't be right. He aims to punch the force field and his fist passes through with no resistance. But. you. Repeated tests confirm it. Bradley can reach through the force field, and, but I can't. Neither can he touching. Neither can he if he's touching me. I don't understand. Every time we think this house makes sense, it turns out it doesn't. Could Lindsay and Avalo and the others have been lying to us all along? Does that first would affect anyone other than me? Maybe you should go out and look for help. We can't go out. I can't. You can. What about you? I'd wait here for you. Billy looks at the force field. If I'm out there, I might not be able to get back in. If it doesn't affect you, I only got here in the first place because I was holding on to you. There's something very wrong in this house from the beginning. They've been too nice to you, but not me. They don't want me here. Well, you did pull a gun on them. And now they have that too. They could be planning to do anything to you. This field thing blocks you, but not me. You're trapped here, but not me. If I went outside to hurt you, I might never see you again. And I won't leave you behind. Bradley. It's what... It's sweet of him to worry about me, but... Should you not insist that Bradley leave the mansion on his own? Yes or no? You both can decide. I like where it filled up like almost the entirely right part of the screen.
a little because I know you can say yes. But how do you make no? Right, I can over. So should he insist on should we insist on him leaving the house or not? We either make him leave the house or we make him stay. Yes is making him leave by the way. Because that's insisting and that, that means yes. That means yes you're insisting him to leave. And I don't know what will happen to the storyline if we actually do that. And since no choice is being given for about a minute, I'm just going to say no. Maybe there's a way to turn this fuel suit off so we can both leave. Losing power was supposed to do that. Yes, but Lynn's already been up to something from the beginning, and they've been trying to hide it from us. Maybe they keep all this in the basement. It's worth a try. Cautiously of every shadow, we make our way to the basement stairs. Down and around, around and down, until the alarms is ringing in the ears. Where did that come from? Should we go back? It's too late now, we may as well find out the truth. But the bottom of the stairs, we find only a firmly locked door. Damn it! He rattles the door a bit. Keep it locks? Uh, I can try, but I've never actually managed to do it. I don't much to work with though. Uh, I don't even have a hairpin. Do you have any safety pins? No, maybe we should just break it down. I think that's enough of that. Cut. So your true colors are revealed. Bradley opens his mouth to speak, but I flicked the side of his leg with a fingernail to distract him. What true colors? We're in an explosion and came down to see if everything was okay. An explosion? The power is out upstairs, haven't you noticed? Oh. Wait a second, he actually looks worried. What's going on here? Robert footsteps echoed down the stairs. Yo. There's no time. Get these two out of here. Uh, I have to see the lap and hope it's not too late. We have one day, 14 hours, 28 minutes left. Tuesday morning, fairly early, and the power is back on. Bradley and I are sitting in the main lobby under the watchful eyes of Alban and Nathaniel. Lindsay Ruffar in the basement, still dealing with whatever went wrong last night. Nobody looks happy about it. At least they haven't locked me and Bradley up again. They've even promised to explain. Once Linz and Ruffar goes back, come back. So wait, the ground lobby, so impressive when I first saw it days ago. Now in this room, I can't help thinking about the force field that forms the bars of a prison. My prison. Whether it's a prison for anyone else, I can't say. We haven't told them about the discovery. If they don't know, he can get out and he might be able to surprise them and escape later. Uh, if they do know that the field's don't affect him, if they weren't sent to affect me, then at least playing dumb means they might underestimate, underestimate him. I don't want to believe that these people uh, we've met are evil. Linz is strange, the other is a jerk, but Rough and the final has been camping kind to me. If it's all a lie. Aha, there they are. Now, now maybe we'll get some answers. At most you know, there was some difficulty with the power systems last night. The secondary generators compensated, and there was no data loss. However, it's clear the power demands are slightly higher than anticipated. It is important that we minimize consumption in order to prevent an overload. Therefore, we must disable the air conditioning and water heater. Wait a second, I thought we were trying to cause an overload in order to shut it down the forest field. We will be, eventually. Eventually? Please don't get upset. Is there any reason I shouldn't be upset? Yes, we just couldn't tell you. I was right all along, you have been hiding something from us. Not for the reasons you think, we kept our secrets to save an innocent life. Huh? Come with us to the basement, and you will understand. And if you touch anything, they will suffer quite intensely consequences. I'm sure they understand that. Give Bradley and Janet some credit. It is important that we all remain calm. Everyone looks at Bradley, even me. There's nothing I can do now, uh, anyway. So if you want to tell me what's going on, be my guest. Then follow me. Together we descend the stairs into the basement. I'm less frightened than I was the last time I was here, but still, I don't know what to expect. What have they been hiding from us all this time? And why? Now they're willing to show us. Is it us that are showing? Bradley and me? Whatever is down there, everybody else already knew about it. Down and around and around and down. What is this? Inside the cavernous unfinished space in the basement, someone has built a medical laboratory. There are creators and equipment, some that I recognize, some that I don't. I want patients surrounded by tubes and wires and moving. 
We all hung back to the room, staring. Who is she? My sister. She's in coma? Not exactly. Is she alive? At the moment, she is neither alive nor dead. The only state where she might potentially become either. A situation which will be altered when the procedure is complete. And that's the experiment that has been counting down. This thing you're doing, it finishes tomorrow? That is correct. She looks like a sleeping prince in a fairy tale, the prisoner of a witch's curse, trapped between life and death. What happens then? Her spirit comes back, or is lost forever. Which is why it's important that the procedure is not interrupted. If the odds are only 50 50 at best. You've seen what you needed to see. Now get out of her, I don't want you hovering over her. Can she hear us? Bradley stares in her motionless form, his hand is simply outstretched. No, she's not there now. I just want to wish her well. Bianca will not remember, but we will. Let us go. Quickly file out of the experimental chamber up the stairs and pack the dimension properly. The villain leads us to the sitting room and gestures for everyone to make themselves comfortable on the chairs and sofas. He remains standing, his fingertips lingering over the curves of the candlesticks atop the fireplace. The sunlight through the window should be pleasant should be a pleasant relief from the natural environment of the laboratory below, but even here, if you look closely enough, you can see the patterns of the forest wood crawling across the glass. Why the forest wood stand? Is that part of your experiment? I am not entirely certain how they came about, but uh, there does seem to be some sort of feedback uh, problem leaking into the electric system. It was not intentional. We can't shut it down and debug it at the moment. No, of course not. You could have told us from the beginning. What possible reason would there have been to trust you? Uh, why would we have wanted to hurt your sister? Alban scoffs. I don't know about the universe, but here this is some kind of, uh, some sort of experiment that happens to be illegal. Not to mention potentially lucrative. If information came to the right hands, you thought we were spies? Your arrival did seem rather coincidentally timed. I shake my head. I don't know how things work here, I don't know what you're doing or how dangerous it is. But as long as you haven't made false promises and everyone knows the risks, we do. I spread my hands and shrug awkwardly. I hope it works out for you. If force food can spring up like magic in this world, then maybe some electrical process can bring someone back from vegetable state. I just don't know. Vegetable state? Ugh. <laughs> now that you know, you understand why it's important to control power usage, and why you may all be rather distracted for the next 30 hours or so. Yes, of course. Other than that, the gathering dissolves. I get Bradley's arm as he's about to fall inside the room. Wait. Uh, once everyone else is out of earshot, I can tell you. Should we tell them what we found out about the forest suit not affecting you? I don't think that matters now. What? Why not? I don't think really. I don't really understand all this medical magic stuff. Uh, but I understand all of them. That's his sister in there. Mianka, she looks like Alwyn, don't you think? Except she's more helpless. And a lot prettier. <laughs> wow. Oh god. I don't know why I could reach my hand through the force field. Maybe it's because the power was down, so it was weaker. If we told them, they might want to do tests and poke at it and stuff, but we don't know how it works. If it's all connected, then messing with it might hurt Bianca somehow. I can't risk that. I can't touch anything that might break. So, that's it? We just sit and wait? What else is there? Cool, let's get some breakfast. Actually, I'm thinking about going back to bed. You're not feeling good? I haven't had enough sleep, and I've been... Uh, Stick out here worrying about what's going to happen for the past hour and tired. I haven't been sleeping well either. I've had these dreams. Well, I hope you feel better. Wake me in a few hours? Sure. I'm gonna get some food and talk to Linz. I know. I want to know more about this thing and if there's anything I can tell Bianca. Later. And he leaves me, uh, he leaves me behind, alone. Just a few hours ago, he was telling me that he would never, that he never would. I don't know what I was expecting. I've done an invalid. I need them to escort me to my room. I'll nap for a few hours, then get up, have some food, and figure out what to do with my day. We have one day, nine hours, and twenty-seven hour, uh, minutes left. Then we know the set of Bianca. I hope. Where am I? Why can't I see? Why can't I move? Somebody, please help! Just a dream. It's probably about lunchtime by now. I slept longer than I meant to. I don't feel very well rested, though. I keep having dreams, and none of them are pleasant. There's something. Some perverse sense of wrongness draw my dreams, but I can't put my finger on it. Did I Bradley say he was having bad dreams too? It could be natural reacting to being lost that far from home. We're in our own universe. It's hard for us to get further from our home. 
Why didn't Braddy come up and wake me up? I must have been out here for hours. I guess he's found something more interesting to worry about. She looks like Alwyn, don't you think? Except so much more helpless. For the moment I saw, Bi he saw Bianca, I became less important to him. Uh, the sleeping princess, and he's a noble knight come to rescue her. No, that's stupid. I can't be jealous of a dying girl in a coma. Show the kneel over him. I don't even like him, he's just some stupid boy. I don't... I'm not... I'm a baby behind. I'm not in love with him. I have to go join the others. Wait, only 22 hours and 49 minutes? Okay, sure. Uh, no E. A? The one A. I. Yes, two eyes. And two... Two eyes and two eyes. After dinner, we tried to think of entertaining ways to pass time and keep in mind some things. Albert's just a poker, but that requires sticks to bed with. Raphael doesn't approve of gambling anyway. Uh, charades is obviously useless because we don't share a common popular culture. I've never had any heard of any of their books and movies. At the moment, we're playing a uh, the hangman. What the hanging? The word so far is uh, A I I. There's an I near the end of two letters after it. There could be ing. How about the in? We have the N and then the G, which leaves us with. Does that anybody help? S. R. Lynn's not, so that's the. R and S. Those two. T? No. I'm pretty sure there aren't any more vowels. It could be something that goes S, L, M, P. Cold as ice. Perhaps H? The H is added to... Radishing? Oh, Ravishing. Indeed. Oh, for fuck's sake. Pervert. It's only a word. I don't understand why such an innocent game is all about death in your world. Well, it's, it's kids game, right? And kids like to joke around death a lot. Um, I think there are songs about murdering their teachers and burning down their schools. They're awful. Children say such things. Never underestimate the viciousness of a small child. Never let them out of your sight. And not all children are vicious, but they. But yes, they do the horrible jokes at school. I play nasty pranks. Like what? Uh. Tax on seats. Debagging. Take me signs. Tying people's feet together. Poison. Poison? <laughs> Generally without success, but they do try. The first six is hat. Even girls do these things? If they don't like you, or sometimes even if they do, uh, if they think it's funny, you have people that understand the damage that they can do. They used to be too broken, things getting fixed. They don't see the harm. Or they just don't care. Plenty of kids don't care about anything but themselves. Most of them go out of it as they grow up. Once you've lost something, once you have something to regret, and uh, know the pain you think hard about the pain you cause to others, we want to live without regret. Other, another game, maybe? Anyone? 11 hours left, Jesus. Okay. So, in all honesty, time is now really going fast. We barely had two hours left the other time, and now we're at half a day already. And that's just almost half an hour ago. I'm sinking on the water, but then it's as dark and sticky as Molo says. It clings to my limbs at where I movement, wearing me down. I'm not afraid, because it's so dense. I can't sink quickly. It should be easy to stay afloat, at least for a while. I'll be alright as long as I stay calm, but I can't see anything. No light to guide me, no sign of help coming. No sign of help coming. How long can I hold on? And then from nowhere, a force pushes my head down under the surface. I'm wet. I must have slipped down somehow. I'm all tangled up in the sheets and there's no pillow under my head. No wonder I was struggling in my dream. Blurry, I pull up the sheet on my face. What on earth? The four suit, uh, which was covering the windows and doors, blocking an escape from the house, I started to crawl inward. That's what chopped me down the bed. In the field are collapsing, someone must have gone terribly wrong. I need to get help. Everybody, wake up! Who's the dramatic, Janet? But the force fields. We know, come downstairs, we've been waiting for you to wake up. That jerk! I hurry downstairs. Here too, the force suit has shrunk inwards a few inches away from the door. Janet, thank goodness you're alright. Where's Bradley? I'm... but I... Bradley hops down the stairs behind me, still fastening his pants. His face shows confusion and dismay. Obviously, Linz was playing some kind of prank on me back there, never mind. What's happening? The Vernon shakes his hat. 
There is no immediate cause for concern. My particles are crystallizing on schedule. Everything is entitled to reintegration this evening. This is simply an unexpected side effect. An unexpected side effect? You said the voice will result of power buildup interacting with the security systems winding around the doors and windows. I point at the freestanding shimmer, which is clearly not surrounded by the door frame. Does that look like wiring to you? It could still be projected, somehow. Clearly I was uh, mistaken about the nature of the interference. It was some sort of ethereal presence differentially relating to the growing potential energy. Cut the technobabble and get to the point. Why aren't you more worried about this? Simple logic. Those fields, uh, those field effects have been discernible for days without noticeable change. Based on that demonstrated creative expansion, they will not encroach on the laboratory before the process includes. Therefore, they do not represent a substantial change in the risk projections for the procedure. Really, one of the... Really, one has to expect a few unusual reactions when tampering with the forces of nature. You are expecting something like this. Fires, floods, explosions, hallucinations... These things happen. I don't like the sound of this. No one asked you to come here. We all chose to take the risk, for Bianca's sake. If I could send the two of you to safety, I would. But there's no way to escape without killing Bianca. At least, not for me. As I said, the risk parameter have not specially changed. You can now go about your daily business. I'll keep an eye on the lab. Call to watch over us. With the burning, twisting light of the forest field pressing in around us, how are we supposed to relax for the day? I still us part ways. I tried to catch Bradley's, Bradley's eyes. Can we talk? Ah, uh, maybe later. There's something I need to take care of first. Something down in the lab? How did you know? I can put two and two together. Well, I was waiting to tell you. It's Bianca, isn't it? Huh? She's beautiful and quiet and perfect and she needs you to defend her. That's what you've been looking at all along. She, she's the girl of your dreams. Yeah, the girl of my dreams is, dreams is you. Huh? Since we've been here together having these dreams, first you're about Susan. I'd see her falling and I couldn't reach her and she'd be gone. Then I started having the same dream about you, always falling in the dark, and I couldn't pull you back, and you'd fade away. And I realized I couldn't stand if anything happened to you. You're cute, and you're fun to hang out with, and you know lots of things I don't. I like having you around. I... I know it's my fault that you're here, and you're in danger because of Bianca, and I'm sorry. But if you weren't here, I... I can't imagine this without you. I can't imagine anything without you. But you said you had to get back to the lab. That's because I didn't want to give it... Give it to you until it's finished. It? You raise a hand, and a length of a shining silver dangles from it. The one with a flat circle, no, a coin, and a female coin with a ground woman's pillow fell on it. It's not much, it's just one of the dimes uh, and some scraps of wire lint said I could use. But I didn't have anything to give you, and I thought, if we if we do get mad, you might like to remember I... I'm so bad at this. If we do get mad, you might like to have something from Atlanta to remember. That's the sweetest thing anyone has ever done for me. All yesterday, we didn't come wake me up. Is it because you're working on this? Actually, I kind of forgot you asked. <laughs> Same old Bradley. Anyway, it's not done yet, so... Wait, I should say something too. I never thought I'd see anything in a guy like you. But that's mostly because I never thought a guy like you would see anything in me. I spent a lot of my life being an outsider. I was really unpopular, too bossy, too much of a show off in class, and not pretty enough. But you are. The other kind of kids were mean to me, but they were just kids. They grew up and got over it. It was I was the one who didn't. I thought everyone was beneath me. When I agreed to go out with you, I wasn't taking you seriously, which is fine because it wasn't a real date. But I didn't know that then. I judged you too quickly. I thought you weren't worth my time. I was wrong. You're wonderful. Aww. Now you said that some... Oh, for fuck's sake. I know you said some of the girls she went out with got pushy. And I didn't want to I didn't and I don't want to be pushy, but I've never I've never been kissed. I hope that was okay. Yes, everything is great. Come on, let's get away from the thing and relax. As he gestures, I instantly pick over my shoulder, and I turn with the light to the forest with shrinking near to the ink wall, like an advancing doom. Not a pleasant thought. There's something nag at the back of my mind, something I should have said earlier, but was distracted. What is the string to remember? Oh. Okay, so depending on the choices you make, 
you actually unlock options like later on as well. We are not able to actually select season. We have to go for Bianca. Which makes me worry. Well, it makes, makes me wonder. It makes me. It, it all, no, honestly, it just makes me, makes me wonder. Like, how would this go on after this? Either way, I'm Bianca. Let's go to the library for a bit. It's into our room, so we'll be away from that. Okay. Welcome to the library. Our hands lightly brushing against each other. This thing Liz is doing, at first I thought it made sense. If Bianca is in a coma or something familiar, electrical brain stimulation might help. But that's our world science. The way Linz is talking, it sounds more like he's trying to do his race to death. Whatever turns out well in the movies. Yeah, I've seen a lot of those, but that's just movies. Four suits are anti-aging drugs or magic. Uh, two. <laughs> Where we come from. Not to mention traveling to another universe in the first place. I've had bad dreams all this time we've been here. So have you. It's pretty clear Linz... And it's pretty clear that Linz's experiment is getting out of his control. The magic balls says all uh, signs point to doom. Yeah, well, there's something we can do about it, is it? Is there? There's nothing I can do about it. The final said if he could, he'd send his uh, out of us would be safe. I can't leave. The force wouldn't let me. Won't let me. But you? I told you before, I won't leave you here. I know, but I feel terrible thinking if something does happen to you, it's my fault because you stayed for me. It's not just for you. What would happen to me if I ran? This house is in, and the people in it are all I've got in this universe, for real. I'd rather stand with my friends and take my chances. Everybody's worried. They've done everything they could to save Bianca and now it's the final countdown, win or lose. Even if we're okay, if she doesn't make it... Yeah, poor Alban. I couldn't walk away. I have to find out what happens and help if there's any way in common. You're right. I take all of his hands to squeeze. For luck, for us, for Bianca, for everybody, let's see it through. All we can do now is wait. The last five minutes. Another bunch, we pelt down the stairs, crawling at the rails to keep from falling. Linz, the forest is collapsing. Jeanette, be careful. He catches my elbow as I stumble. We need to get inside. Alan pulls open the door and holds it so that everyone else can crowd in through the laboratory. Power levels are still increasing. The four suits are, sp are, are speeding up out there. We'll be crushed. Perhaps I should recalculate my risk parameters. Can you do it or can't you? With such a, a powerful reaction, it's clear that something will happen when we engage with the uh, plasmatic kill adult. There's, there is some chance that we'll kill us all. His hand hovers over the series of controls. This beta connector is blown loose again. Rough out, reconnect that. Yes, sir. Three minutes and counting, but the levels are high enough that we can engage now if necessary. If the fields keep coming, I saw the heart. Just sit down. If it doesn't make a difference, then do it now before this gets worse. Lin's not just scanning rapidly back and forth over the readout, making final checks. I reach over and take hold of Bradley's hand. Whatever happens, at least we're together. Cross your fingers. Here we go. Zero, 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 zero. I can't feel my hands. I can see my. I can't see my hands. I'm not sure if, if I have hands. Everything is light. My voice. Where am I? I don't know, but I think I'm here too. Bradley, is it you? Yeah, kind of. Where's the rest of me? What happened to us? We were in the lab and something exploded. Are we dead? Maybe. Is this heaven? I don't believe in heaven. Anyway, if we were in heaven, there would be more people here than just us. But what did happen? It's strange, with no sense of body, but I can feel something tugging at me. There's something in the lab, I can see everyone there, even us. My body and Bradley's have fallen to the floor, lifeless, and the others are staring at us, but nobody's moving. It's like they're all frozen in time. They look sad. I suppose I ought to be sad as well. It's all over, I'm dead. But the fact feels quite distant at the moment. At least they're alright. What about Bianca? I refocus my attention to the bed where she lies. From, her, uh, from here, I can perceive the wrongness about Bianca. Not like there's something about, bad about that. Bad there. Jesus, I really can't. But like something is not there where it should be. An emptiness. A void in the world in the shape of a soul. She's not alive. She's not dead. She's just empty. Poor Bianca. I guess it didn't work. 
I tried to turn away and look back at the others. For some reason, I can't. I tried to put back, put back and I can't. Bradley, something's wrong. What is it? I can't stop looking at Bianca. I feel stuck somehow. Do you feel it? I don't think so. I'm not sure what you mean. I don't know what's normal when you're dead. I don't remember being dead before, but there is something familiar about the situation. My dream, that was of being trapped in the darkness and pulled away, pulled down to the light. Like, what is it pulling me in? Bianca doesn't have a soul. Because she's dying? It's more than that. Don't you see how she's glowing? I can see it, but I don't understand. She doesn't have a soul and we are souls, and I can't get away. I can't look at anything else, I can't move, I cut before until I saw that void. The light, now it's all the hold on the position. If I relax my guard, I start to step closer. Somehow, I'm being dragged into Bianca. Is this Lynn's experiment to save one life at the cost of another? I didn't want to die, I wanted to save her. But like this. Please, help me, I'm going to fall. Wait. I can't wait. I'm trying to think, Bianca needs a soul or she'll die, right? In case you haven't noticed, we're dead, our souls are all we have left. Maybe my ancestors were right, maybe our spirits are supposed to be reborn, life after life, or maybe your heaven is out there waiting for us. If she drains away my soul, I won't see either of them. I'll be even worse than that, I'll be nothing. She needs a spirit, it doesn't have to be yours. It's not even if you're destroyed. What could we do to sacrifice Bradley to save me, or me to save Bradley? There's two of us, and only one of her. If we join together, if she takes a little bit from me and a little bit of, uh, from you. Is it even possible? I don't know. I want to fade away, I don't want to be forgotten. If this soul is all I have left, I don't want to give it up. But if it's with you, to save Bianca, all of my life and all of yours, whatever left whatever is left goes to whatever wherever we are after this. Will it be two halves or one whole? Keep me reconnected to only half a soul? Do I have any choice? Then join with me. Even out of the body, I can feel Bradley's warmth wrapping around me. I can remember the strength of his, of his hands, the softness of his lips, and everything we had together. And all my regrets, everything I could ever have done differently, had to lead me uh, to a different fate. The universe is so vast, and our lives are so brief. For Bradley and I, there is only this moment. Until next time. Another look at... Can you hear me? I think she's waking up. Bianca? This one was a success. He had fought past the forces of life and death to give Bianca a second chance. She was alive, too extremely disoriented, and would eventually make a full recovery. The victory came at a high cost. Providence and Riley collapsed during the procedure and could not be revived. It was decided uh, best not to tell Bianca about the ill fated twist from another universe. They insisted that the responsibility should be on his shoulders. In the future, he would be more cautious. Uh, Though not as inventive with his medical research, many lives will be saved. Therefore, one could say that the spirits of Bradley and Jeanette will live on in those who would be helped as a result of their sacrifice, and perhaps in other ways as well, which there are some things that a, that a mortal world can never know. Ending O3 Ascension. But it's only this is only part of the story. Um, so we're true in the third episode. And I got the third achievement, Ascension. From death, life. That's the description. Hold on, that was... I'm not going to lie, that was really deep. That ending, oh my god. Okay, so we're done with this game. Thank you very much for watching uh, the date warp. Thank you very much for watching this date warp. Uh, we'll see you during the next recording, which won't be date warp anymore. I won't be recording date warp, I will probably be streaming it in the future. Getting the other endings and stuff, looking up things for that, trying to actually see all of them, see like where the story leads to. For now, this is it for Dave Rob. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one and I'll tell you for any time. Good day.